You don't need to be able to draw to be an artist, thanks to AI. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, buckle up, because AI is turning that fantasy into reality. Get ready to have your mind blown as we dive into the wild world of AI-generated art. <laughs> Greetings, you brilliant bundles of neurons. Theodore here ready to take you on a mind-bending journey through the realm of AI-generated art. Today, we're dissecting the revolutionary stable diffusion model, a piece of tech so cool it might just make Salvador Dali jealous. Our expert hosts will guide us through the noise-to-masterpiece process, unravel the mysteries of latent space, and ponder the future of creativity in an AI-powered world. So, grab your digital paintbrush, and let's dive in. All right, so, you know, you send us this stack of articles about stable diffusion, mm. and and I got to say, I'm I'm pretty hooked already. It's really captured everyone's attention. Yeah, it's like everyone's suddenly an AI art enthusiast. Yeah, and it's really interesting how accessible it is now. And that's the thing, right? Like, using AI to make art used to be something you'd only see, you know, in some big tech company, not on your home computer. Right. And now we're downloading these powerful AI models onto our own machines. That's a big shift. Huge. I mean, do you think this all started with, like, GPT-3 and chat GPT? Oh, absolutely. Those were really, like, a proof of concept for everyone. Yeah, one of these articles even called it, like, the, the Big Bang moment. That's a good way to put it. GPT-3 and chat GPT showed the world what generative AI could do with text. And then everyone started to think, well, what about images? Right. Like, yeah. what's next? That, and then, boom, that. stable diffusion comes along. Exactly. But there are a lot of AI image generators out there now. So what makes stable diffusion so special? It's open source, which is huge. Okay, so, like... Anyone can just mess around with it. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like sharing the recipe so researchers, developers, even just people at home can all use it and tweak it and make their own versions. That's amazing. It's like this whole, like, I don't know, like a community of people coming together. Totally. It's driving a ton of innovation. Yeah. And it's not just about making, you know, cool pictures from text prompts, yes. right? These articles mentioned video generation and all sorts of other stuff. Definitely. It can be used for customization, scientific visualization, tons of things. It's opening up a lot of possibilities. Okay, so how does it actually work? Because honestly, typing in a few words and getting a piece of art back still feels like magic to me. It does feel magical, but there's some very clever technology behind it. At its core, stable diffusion uses something called diffusion models. Imagine you have a block of marble but instead of marble, it's just visual noise, like static on a TV screen. Okay, I'm picturing it. Okay, let's break this down for those of us who aren't AI whisperers. AI shapes the noise like sculpting clay, pulling from more images than a human brain could hope to learn. It starts with total chaos. That's our noise. As the AI works its magic, patterns start to emerge. Keep going and suddenly, bam, you've got a stunning piece of art. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, Hit that like button, friends. It's like having a master sculptor and an art historian all rolled into one super efficient digital package. And the diffusion model is like a sculptor who gradually refines that noise until a coherent image emerges. So how do we go from like static to, let's say, a hyper-realistic image of a dog wearing a tiny hat? That's where the training data comes in. The model has been trained on a massive amount of real images, so it understands what makes those images work, what patterns and relationships exist. So I've learned from thousands of pictures of dogs wearing hats. Exactly. And then it uses that knowledge to guide the process of refining the noise based on your prompt. That makes sense, but those image files are enormous. How can stable diffusion handle all of that data without needing like a supercomputer. Well, that's another really cool part. It actually doesn't work with those massive files directly. It uses something called latent space. Latent space. Yeah. That sounds like, I don't know, something out of Star Trek. It's not quite that complicated. Okay, good. Imagine you could compress a giant file without losing any of the important details. Okay. That's basically what's happening in latent space. All right, folks, let's simplify this latent space business. Think of it like compressing a massive art gallery into a tiny portable device. All the important visual information is still there, but now it's way more manageable. 
Our AI is working with this compressed gallery of image data, making the whole process faster and more efficient. It's like having the entire history of art at your fingertips, ready to inspire and inform new creations in the blink of an eye. Stable Diffusion works with these compressed representations of the images, which makes it way more efficient. So it's like finding the essence of the image and then working with that. Exactly. And then at the end, it expands it back out into a full image. Brilliant. But there was something in one of the articles about three main components within Stable Diffusion. Ah, uh, yes. Those are key. We can think of it like a team, each with a specific job. Okay, I like that. So first, we have the autoencoder, or VAE. This component handles the compression and decompression. It shrinks the image down to work with in latent space and then blows it back up at the end. So like a really fancy zip file for images. Exactly. Then there's the unit. This is where the creative magic really happens. The unit operates in that compressed latent space, taking directions from your prompt and refining the image until it matches what you asked for. So if the unit is the artist, it needs some inspiration. Right. And that's where our third team member comes in, the text encoder. This component acts as a translator, taking your words and converting them into something the unit can understand. And it's whispering to the unit, okay, they want a dog, make it a golden retriever, and don't forget the tiny hat. Exactly. It's this interplay between the VAE, the unit, and the text encoder that allows Stable Diffusion to work its magic. And the great thing about the unit is that it can handle a wide range of image sizes, which is something that a lot of AI models struggle with. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, those little 256 by 256 pixel images are cute and all, but... You have their limitations. Exactly. Sometimes you want to create something a bit bigger, you know? Absolutely. Stable Diffusion uses some really clever convolutional techniques that allow it to generate much higher resolution images without losing consistency. Okay, so it can create these big detailed images mm -hmm. without everything looking all weird and distorted. Exactly. That's amazing. But you know, one thing that really caught my eye in these articles was this idea of conditioning. It's like you can guide stable diffusion with more than just text prompts. Yeah, conditioning is where things get really interesting. So for example, with image to image generation, you can start with a sketch, a blurry photograph, even another AI generated image and use that as a starting point. Wait, so I could give stable diffusion like a napkin doodle and it could, I don't know, make it look presentable. Oh, I don't know about every doodle, but it can certainly use your input as a guide. You can add details, change the style, even blend it with other images. That's wild. So it's like having an AI assistant that can help you take your ideas even further. Exactly. It's all about augmenting human creativity. I love that. And then there's something called semantic synthesis. It's kind of like creating a blueprint for your image using these things called semantic maps. Semantic maps. Okay, now you're just using big words to make me feel like I need to go back to school. No, it's not that complicated. Think of it like this. You define areas in your image, the sky, the grass, the water, whatever, and then Stable Diffusion uses its knowledge to fill in those areas realistically. So it's like a coloring book. Yeah. But the AI does all the shading and detail work for you. Hold on to your brushes, art lovers. This semantic synthesis thing is like giving AI a coloring book and watching it go to town. We're essentially saying, hey, AI, the sky goes here, trees there, and maybe throw in a unicorn for good measure. And voila, the AI fills in the details like a caffeinated toddler with a new set of crayons, only with way better results and less mess on the walls. That's a good way to think about it. Wow. So we've got text prompts, we've got sketches, we've got these semantic maps. What else can Stable Diffusion do? The articles mentioned a few other applications that sounded almost too good to be true. Oh, yeah, there are some really cool ones. So, for example, there's in-painting and object removal. Ever take a photo and wish you could just get rid of that one annoying thing in the background? Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> I've spent way too much time trying to edit things out of photos. Well, with Stable Diffusion, you can just tell it to remove something. And it will intelligently fill in the missing areas with content that matches the rest of the image. Okay, that is seriously impressive. No more spending hours with the clone tool. Exactly. And it can also help with old photos that are, you know, a bit low resolution. Oh, like those blurry family photos from back in the day? Exactly. Stable Diffusion can actually upscale those images and bring back a lot of the detail and clarity. That's incredible. Yeah. It's like giving those old memories a new lease on life. But this is all getting pretty advanced, and the articles did mention some ethical 
concerns, you know, like this technology is really powerful. It definitely is. And like any powerful tool, it's important to use it responsibly. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, the whole AI stealing art debate. Listen up, because this is important. AI isn't copying, it's learning. Just like how you've absorbed inspiration from every artwork you've ever seen, AI does the same, but on a massive scale. Feeling threatened? Don't be. Instead, think of it this way. You've just been handed a super-powered art tool. So stop worrying and start learning how to use it. Trust me, the artists who embrace this tech now are going to be light years ahead of the rest. Time to level up your art game, folks. Yeah, one thing that stuck out to me was the potential for creating fake images, these deep fakes. Right. That's a valid concern. As this technology gets more and more sophisticated, it becomes harder to tell what's real and what's not, which obviously has huge implications for things like misinformation and online trust. It's like we're giving everyone a high-tech magnifying glass to examine the truth even closer. Exactly. And in this new landscape, transparency and critical thinking are more important than ever. Absolutely. And stable diffusion is already incredibly efficient. But I did read that it's not quite as fast as some other methods. Yeah, diffusion models do take a bit longer to create images, especially at higher resolutions. So there are these trade-offs like speed versus quality. In a way, yeah. And that compression trick we talked about, while it's super clever, working in latent space can sometimes mean tiny details get lost in translation. Ah, uh, so it's not perfect. Yeah. But it still feels like with stable diffusion, we're on the edge of a creative revolution, you know? But there's that question from our outline. If this gets even more powerful and easier to use, does that mean everyone will be an artist? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? There are definitely some who worry that AI will make human artists obsolete. Yeah, like robots are going to take their jobs. Yeah. Right? But others see it more as a tool, something to enhance creativity, not replace it. Exactly. I think I'm kind of in both camps. Like AI can definitely handle some of the technical stuff, but there's something about human creativity that's just different. It's that human touch. Right, that emotion, that unique perspective. You can't just program that. And that's what makes art resonate with people. The stories, the emotions, the connection, those are all human qualities. So where does all of this leave us? What's the big takeaway for everyone listening to this deep dive? I think it's this. We're entering a new era of visual expression, a digital renaissance. And AI is a huge part of that. It's a tool for everyone, not just professionals. Yeah, whether you're an artist, a designer, or just someone who wants to play around and have fun creating things, it's an exciting time. It is. But with all of this excitement, we need to remember that responsibility is important too. Right, like using these tools ethically and thoughtfully. Exactly. And always appreciating the power and the magic of human creativity. Well said. This deep dive into stable diffusion has been quite the journey, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners before we wrap up? Don't be afraid to experiment, dive in, and see what you can create. And remember, this technology is constantly evolving, so stay curious and keep exploring. Oh, and have fun. Couldn't have said it better myself. And that's it for this deep dive into stable diffusion. Thanks for joining us. There you have it, you marvelous meatbags. We've journeyed from noise to Picasso, all thanks to the magic of AI. As we wrap up this artistic adventure, remember, the next masterpiece you see might just be born from a bunch of ones and zeros. Will AI replace human creativity, or will it be the ultimate paintbrush in our digital toolbox? Only time will tell. Until then, keep creating, keep questioning, and for the love of all that is pixelated, don't let the robot steal your imagination. This is Theodore, signing off and eagerly awaiting our AI-generated future. Let's just hope it comes with an undo button. Stay curious, you beautiful bundles of creativity. Yeah.